In 2008, Isis King was the first transgender woman to appear on America's Next Top Model, breaking ground not only in the fashion and modeling industries, but on TV screens across America. I was born physically male, but mentally everything else I was born female. In her work as a model, fashion designer, and actress, she's been changing perceptions and breaking down barriers. Janet Mock is a trans advocate and staff editor for People.com. To, to speak up, to live visibly, because being silent would be a disservice, not only to me, but to the women who came before me and the ones whose voices have been silenced by intolerance and hate. Janet shared her story of transitioning as a teenager in Marie Claire magazine. She chose to live visibly as a transgender woman to challenge people's perceptions and serve as a positive role model for other transgender people. Hey. Isis and Janet came to In the Life to discuss media portrayals of transgender people and how their lives and work contribute to changing public perception. So your life has changed a lot in the past year. How does it feel to now be considered a transgender role model? It's a role that I'm growing more and more kind of comfortable into. I guess kind of how you grow into your womanhood or your adulthood. You kind of grow into the role of role model taking on all of that responsibility. People need someone to look up to. Mm. That's why I stepped forward with my story in Marie Claire. There seems to be a gap in terms of media coverage of um, transgender women specifically. We actually have lives that need to be covered and civil rights that need to be attained and fought for. And so, you know, I have to ask you the same question, you know, the power of TV. Everyone's watching Top Model, and not only trans women, but you're a role model to women. How does that feel for you? I think it hit me the first time right after Top Model. I went to a restaurant, and this lady came up with this little girl who was maybe five years old and said she loved me. I didn't realize I would impact young kids, and I never would have thought a parent would let their child come up to a transgender woman. It really was touching because I didn't grow up and see people that transition, you know, unless they were on Maury or the Jerry Springer show. The next generation will see that. You can follow your dreams. And we bring, me, you, we bring the normality of the situation. We're regular people following our dreams, pursuing our careers. So we all understand the power of TV and the fact that you are on TV and your reach there. What about the other depictions of trans women on TV? We haven't jumped over the hurdle of positive imagery of transgender women on TV. There's me, there's Laverne. I can't really think of anybody else. And then when I do think about it, I still once again go back to Jerry Springer and Maury. Those shows equally have, if not more reach than America's Next Top Model. And it's just like a new updated version of the freak show. No one talks about these women's lives beyond the fact, are they a man or a woman? We really need to get over the fact that this is how I was born. I went on the Howard Stern show, and he said the word tranny a couple of times. And I had to say, Howard is Ugh. trans. I said, <laughs> Howard, it's transgender. So for the rest of the interview, he said transgender. And I said, Howard, you really learning. He said, I'm open to learning. And just like even that and standing on his show and teaching him something, we live in a world where kids grow up and are educated by TV. The more we stand up and say this isn't right, the more they'll learn. But if we just allow it to happen and just take it, then we're not getting anywhere. You have to use your life as a teaching moment and a learning moment. I go to these panels and many people say, well, you were born a man or, you know, what do you think when people look at your Adam's apple or all of these things that are <laughs> when they're kind of reading you a little mm -hmm. bit. They're curious, and curiosity mm -hmm. is the first step to wanting to understand someone. And your role is to bring it back to what this is, kindly correct them and say, mm -hmm. you know, it's not okay to say that I was born a man, or that I am a man, or that my boyfriend is gay, or all these things, but I'm happy that you asked me that question. This is the way that it should be. I just love that you did, you use that moment with Howard Stern mm -hmm. to kind of turn it into a teaching moment. Even if you have to turn around and, <sighs> <laughs> He said, that you know, moment, like, that, breather. Whoo, that moment where you turn around and say, mm, you know, but and it's also, keep it to yourself exactly. and, and just, you know, it's, it comes with the territory of being a role model. So you just mentioned using the word tranny. What does that mean to you when you hear that word and when it's used, especially within the LGBT community as well? Mm -hmm. 
I always say to me, it's like the N-word. And people say, well, it doesn't mean the same. And I said, well, I'm a black woman mm -hmm. and I'm transgender. So I'm telling you, when somebody says it, it has the same effect on me. And I know recently um, it became a big, a big thing. And RuPaul talked about it and said how the word isn't that serious. But I am a transgender female and I'm telling the world that it is that serious. It's not appropriate and there's plenty of other ways to make a joke about whatever than to use a word that hurt a group of people. When you have a platform like RuPaul has a platform, mm -hmm. it's irresponsible. Mm -hmm. Because especially when you're not a trans woman walking through the streets every day, like RuPaul gets to go home and he can just be RuPaul and walk through the street as a gay black man. Mm -hmm. But when you are a trans woman and the world is saying you're a man, you're a tranny, over and over and over is what leads to trans women hurting themselves in a way that they feel they don't deserve more. Yeah. They don't deserve to be on something better than Maury or Jerry Springer or to tell their stories in a, in a positive light. These words and images, they matter and people need to be more responsible. I even try to stay away from transsexual because I still have my own little things with the word. What I, is that? I want to actually explore that. <laughs> I just kind of like the whole tranny thing. I feel like when somebody say transsexual, there's so much negativity to come with it. So I just prefer transgender. Well, yeah, and of course you have the right to self-identify how you choose to self-identify. Yeah. I think that transsexual almost to me makes it only about the body exactly. and the transition, whereas transgender, I feel, speaks more to the entire essence of mm -hmm. what politically what our bodies say. So after Top Model, you know, I went and did all these interviews. People are still asking the same trans 101 questions. What was your name? How old were you when you felt like you were different? All of these questions where it's just like, okay, when are we going to move past this? I get very angry when I see depictions of Trans 101 through mainstream media, especially when I saw the Don Lemon interview, which you were on the panel. <laughs> yes. And it was supposed to be about transgender people in Hollywood. What has been the most difficult part of the transition for you? You know, I thought we were here to talk about trans people in Hollywood. We've got three unbelievably beautiful, talented women up there, and uh, and we're talking about Transgender 101 here. Because it was Laverne Cox, Isis King, Harmony Santana, three transgender women of color, and Chaz Bono coming mm -hmm. in as well. And I want to hear, what was that experience like? Instead, it was Don Lemon asking him about every little thing that he had been so open about already. You know, what is it like to have a beard? Is it, what, what is it like to shave? Don Lemon, what, <laughs> is, what is it like to have a beard? You know, why are you asking mm -hmm. Chaz Bono what is it like to have a beard? Or hey, is that fun to have, you know, some peach fuzz? And does it, is it fun to shave? Like, I'm like, really? You're a CNN interviewer and that's what you're choosing to ask one of the most prominent transgender activists and advocates already living so bravely and visibly. And then you have three women sitting there quiet. Just sitting there quiet, no questions are asked about. Laverne Cox, what is it like to produce television as a transgender woman? How are you changing images? Mm -hmm. You know, Isis King, what was it like to transition in front of the media and to now have this huge platform where you're becoming an actress and a designer? And, and it's just like so many things about our lives that are yeah. so much more than just our bodies and this physical transition that we go through. What is your goal when you kind of go from Isis the celebrity to Isis kind of you know, the activist, advocate, or do you see yourself that way? You know, what are your hopes with these projects that you're doing? My hope is that I will be someone that people can look to as hope for the next generation, for the future, by just being positive and being strong and standing up for what you know is right. It feels as if finally things are kind of rolling yeah. over and changing to show a very diverse portrait of our entire community of LGBT mm -hmm. people, that we're everywhere and we're part of everyone's homes and lives and societies. You know, I'm really happy that the world can see two women sit down and talk about issues that matters a lot to us. And I think that's really powerful. You know, I feel so privileged to be here and share this space with you. And, you know, it is something that's rarely done. And it's, it's an honor for both of us to kind mm -hmm. of be here and be able to talk about these issues. Give me a love, as Tyra would say. No, this is what Tyra would do. <laughs> You're dismissed. <laughs>